Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number six from the October 2017 Mechanics M1 International A Level at Excel exam. Um, this question has been requested by one of my viewers, and um, I will answer this. The ones, the questions before 2019, generally, I only answer um, if I feel that it's useful for certain points I want to make or if somebody requests me to answer it okay so now I'm going to make it's, it's, the question says an athlete goes for a run along a straight horizontal road starting from rest okay starting from rest okay so that's important here she accelerates at 0 0.6 meters per second squared up to a speed of v meters per second she then maintains this constant speed of v meters per second before finally decelerating at 0 0.2 meters per second squared decelerating back to rest she covers a total distance of 1500 meters in 270 seconds sketch a speed time graph to represent the athlete's run so we're going to have speed plotted against time okay so you have speed in meters per second speed in meters per second against time in seconds all right so starting from rest okay starting from rest so zero zero up to a speed of v meters per second in we don't know how many seconds but we know the acceleration is 0 0.6 maintaining this speed of v meters per second for a while and then decelerating with a deceleration whose magnitude is less than the acceleration that we started with so it's going to be a shallower kind of slope until it comes to rest all right so this must be steeper than that side you must show that in your sketch if you made this side the same steepness or made made you know this one um you know um less steep than that then you will definitely lose one of those marks for sure all right i think that's all you need to show maybe the fact that we got two so 270 seconds as a total time might help us we could write that down in the, in our sketch but apart from that that's the only things you can really show in this sketch okay you can't really show any of the times um that it took for for them to reach that speed or that time at which the deceleration started so those those things are, are missing from our diagram because we can't calculate the actual values right maybe in terms of v we can but I, we don't need to write that down it's only two marks that's fine that's perfectly fine for the marks for the sketch do use a ruler um it's better to use pencils for sketches for the actual lines themselves all right, so there's your answer to part A, two marks, two easy marks. Then it says part B, show that she accelerates for 5V over three seconds. Okay, so that's the time it takes her to accelerate. So it's, it's this part here. So we've got to find what this time is. I'm going to label this as T1. That's the time it takes for her to reach this speed of 5 meters per second. Oh, sorry, of V meters per second. Now we know the acceleration is 0 0.6 meters per second squared in this region here and what we have to understand or one of the you know basics upon which a lot of this um, kinematics is 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 based upon is the fact that the acceleration of a speed time graph is given by its gradient all right the acceleration in a speed time graph is given by its acceleration okay and that's one of the uh, ways that we use to derive the equations of motion we could use the equations of motions here but that's this is the origin of the equations of motion that's how you derive it from the speed time graph from the area and from the gradient that's the origin of how we derive those formulae so if you understand that the gradient of the speed time graph is equal to the acceleration we can answer this question quite simply because i know that the coordinates of this point in terms of what we have here the x coordinate is t1 and the y coordinate is v and here the coordinates of both of them of course are zero zero so we can say that the change in y which is v minus zero in the over the change in x which is t1 minus zero is equal to 0 0.6 now 0 0.6 is the same as 6 over 10 which is 3 over 5 meters per second squared so this is 3 over 5 
as a fraction. Because I gave this as fractions, I'm going to express this as a fraction as well. Now that will give us, if we rearrange it, V over T1 equals 3 over 5. And just rearranging that, you'll end up with T1 equals 5V over 3, which is what we had to show. So there's the answer to part B. And then for part C, it says, show that V squared minus KV plus 450 equals zero, where K is a constant to be found. All right, so now, the other bit of information they gave us was about the distance traveled, which is 1,500 meters. And as I, as I mentioned, the equations of motions, or the equations of motion, are based upon two facts. One of them is that the gradient of the... Um, speed time graph is acceleration the other is that the total area under the graph up to the horizontal axis the time axis is the distance traveled so i know that the area of this shape must be 1500 you know the area of the shape shape must be 1500 if it's traveled 1500 meters so the air the shape here we have is basically a trapezium now a lot of people like to split it up into different you know triangle rectangle another triangle and then add them together. I prefer to think of the area of a trapezium. Very easy. The area of a trapezium is given by the distance between the parallel sides, which I call H, which is this distance between these two parallel sides, which would be V in our case, divided by two times A plus B, which are the sum of the parallel sides. So half the distance between the parallel sides times the sum of the parallel sides. And the parallel sides are basically these two lines here. And one of them we can see is 270 straight away that's the total distance or the total time sorry okay so that's going to be from here to here that's 270 we can see that and the other parallel side is this length over here which we need to find okay now i know so far that this t1 is equal to 5v over 3 now, if I can find what this time is, I'm going to call this time 2. If I can find what this is, then I'll be able to work out the length of this in terms of V. It'll be this minus 5V over 3. It'll be, you know, from, from here to here, minus from there to there, will leave me where that is, right? So I need to find what this time is here, okay? Now, I can use a very similar technique to what I used when I found this time in terms of V. And that is the fact that we know the acceleration... Well, it says deceleration of 0 0.2 means it's negative 0 0.2 meters per second squared, which means that's minus 1 over 5 meters per second squared as a fraction. Now, um, I know that the coordinates of this point here are T2, which I don't know, and V also, which I don't know, but in terms of T2 and V. But this, I know that the, the coordinates are 270 and 0. So I can work out the um, expression for this time t, t2 using this information. So I know the gradient is equal to minus one-fifth. The gradient is V minus zero over T2 minus 270. So if I say V minus zero over T2 minus 270, I know that's equal to minus one over five. So that will help me give, give me expression for T2. So if I rearrange this, it's going to be five times V which is 5v equals, if I cross multiply, it'll be minus 1 times t2 minus 270, which is 270 minus t2. So therefore, I can say t2 is equal to 270 minus 5v. So that's an expression for the time in terms of v, 270 minus 5v. So now I can work out what this is. Okay, I can work out what this is. This, 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 this parallel side is going to be basically you know, this minus that. So 270 minus 5v over 3 minus, sorry, 270 minus 5v take away 5v over 3. Okay, which is going to be 270 minus, that's 15v over 3, that's minus 20v over 3. Let's just add these together as a fraction. So that is my other parallel side. Right, so now I can use this formula, it's V over 2, so it's V over 2 times 270 plus this. So I've got to add these two together. Okay, so I have to add this and this, and I'm going to have my V, which is the distance of the parallel sides. That's what I need for this formula. Okay, that's my V, that's my 
270, that's my 270 minus 20V over 3. So I'm going to put that together in my formula. I know the total area is 1,500 meters. Okay, so that all equals 1,500. So as I just mentioned, I've got V over 2 times, and then I've got 270, which is the total distance between here and there. Okay, this, this parallel side, plus this parallel side, which is plus 270, minus, um, what was it? 20v over 3 minus 20v over 3 and that's equal to 1500 meters so that should when i rearrange this give me exactly this formula here so if i um just simplify a bit v over 2 times this is 540 um minus 20v over 3 equals 1500 all right now if i just multiply this out v over 2 times uh, 540 is going to be 270 v all right minus v over 2 times 20 v over 3 is going to be minus 20 v squared over 6 equals 1500 all right if i get rid of the 6 by multiplying both sides by 6 in fact i can divide by 10 first just to make the numbers easier this is 27 v minus this is going to be actually 2 2 over 3, which is v squared over 3, equals 150. Okay, I've just divided by 10 and just simplified this as well. This is like 10v over 3, so it's going to be um, 10, sorry, 10 over 6, which is which is going to be, um, yeah, the 10, the, the, the 0 cancels in, right? So this is going to be v squared over 3. Now I can multiply everything by 3, so I have... Um, 3 times 27, which is 81v, minus v squared equals 450. Just multiplying everything by 3 to get rid of the fraction. And if I rearrange this so that it looks like that, v squared being positive, I have v squared, and I have minus 81v, and I have plus 450 equals 0. And here we can see k, k is equal to 81. Okay, minus k, minus 81, k is 81. So there we have... Uh, shown this expression is true and now we can go on to part d and part d says find the value of v justifying your answer all right so now to find the value of v we have to um factorize this remember this was 81 okay so we got uh v squared minus 81 v plus 450 equals zero we could solve this by factorizing um, or we could solve this by using the quadratic formula. If we think about factorizing, we're going to find two numbers that multiply to give us 450, and they add up to give us minus 81. Okay, so um, that might be a bit bit of a, a, a hassle to find, uh, to find such numbers. It's not, not impossible. I know that one of them has to end with a zero, basically, or most probably will end with a zero. Um but I think maybe it might be easier to just use the quadratic formula. But what you can't do is just put this in your calculator to get the answer out. Um, you will definitely lose some marks for that. All right? You have to show that either you factorized or you use a quadratic formula or you completed the square. You have to show that you've done at least one of those uh, three things for you to get the answer. All right. So don't just put the answer V equals this and V equals that. Um, without showing any of those techniques. Now here, because the numbers are a bit unfriendly, we can just use the quadratic formula. Um, although I'm pretty sure we'll be able to find them if we just thought a little bit. But So we can say V equals now minus B minus um, 81. So minus minus 81. Remember, it's minus B plus or minus the square root of V squared minus 4AC all over 2A. That's the formula, right? So we have minus b, so minus minus 81, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is minus 81, which becomes 81 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 450, all over 2 times a, which is 2, 2 times 1, right? a, remember, is a coefficient of the squared term, and b is a coefficient of the non-squared term, and c is a constant, right? Now, so once you write that down, we can just put that straight into our calculator and get the answer out. Right, so if I take this, will be 81 because minus and minus is plus. In fact, let me put my fraction bar first. So 81, I'll put plus first. The square root of 81 squared minus 4 times 450. 
divided by 2. That will give us one solution, which is 75. And the other solution, which we must get as well, that gives us 6. So the two possible values of V are 75 and 6. Now, let's see. It says find the value of V. So we can't say the values of V are 6 and 75. Now, 75 looks a bit high, 75 meters per second squared, more meters per second. And we can see that, um, you know, let's see, 270 minus 5V, all right, that's a time here. Now, 5 times 75 is more than 270, uh, isn't it? So you can't have, uh, you know, V being, if, if V equals 75, then this would be a negative time doesn't make sense right because here this time t2 is 270 minus 5 5v so v must be 6 if v equals 75 will cause the time to become negative okay so we can say v is equal to 6 okay why because 270 minus 5v okay um will will be negative if uh, v equals 75 and therefore not possible okay you can't have a negative time it doesn't make sense all right so you can't go into the negative time you can say time 2 equals 270 by 5 v it will be negative all right so it just makes no sense if v is 75 yes 75 solves this equation but it is not a, a solution to our problem in our speed time graph all right so there's the answer to this question v equals 6 Okay, we rejected 75 and we chose 6 because it makes the question, okay, nonsensical using 75. All right, so there's the answer to question number 6 that was requested by one of the students. I hope that was clear. Um, other questions from this paper, I think um, if I get around to answering them, if I'm, I'm requested to do so, you will find them in the playlist that will appear in this section over here. Other questions dealing with speed time graphs and uh, kinematics from m1 you can find them in the playlist over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch the video here which tells you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for thank you for watching and see you soon